Hello and welcome to another homebrew update. I'm your host Troy and we have a lot of stuff to get done today But first I want to tell you a couple things before I get this video started if you hear Possibly construction in the background or child's laughter That is because people are working on a master bathroom in my house and also my nephews will be over and actually just got here so I just want to give you a fair warning about that if you're hearing of that in the background. I'm sorry, but I can't really help it. Anyway guys, today we got a lot of talk about such as the release plans for the Atmosphere custom firmware on the Nintendo Switch, a new update has came out on the 3DS, and we have a ton, a ton of stuff to talk about on the PS Vita. With all this stuff, let's go ahead and jump right in. To start off guys, we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch. The ReSwitch team has decided to put out some release notes about the Atmosphere custom firmware. And the release notes state essentially what they plan to be released by the time the custom firmware comes out, what they're planning to release on the future, and what they already have done. There's a whole lot of information in these release notes and I really think that you guys should all look at it because I will not be covering it all in this video. There's just way, way too much to do it. The very first thing I do want to talk about though is the time frame for it to be released. They will be starting off with the version 0.7 and that will be released sometime at the end of August. Now this can be changed because just like everything else they already stated it could be you know released in the summer and it's still the summer where I'm at but other places that no it's not so it's kind of iffy there but they did say it will be planned to be released in the summer but Obviously, we haven't seen one yet, so we're still waiting. Like I said, it can change. As far as some of the stuff that has been worked on and is being worked on, it goes for the process manager, the title manager, a service manager, and something that will be released in the future, which is awesome, action replace cheat support. I am very excited for that because I love doing the whole cheating stuff and finding cheats and things like that. It really just, ah, it's awesome. So with all of that, I do really think you should take a look at the release notes. The link will be in the description below. Now I could go on and on about the Atmosphere custom firmware, but we do have a lot more stuff to cover. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the 3DS section of things. With 3DS, we only have one thing to talk about, but it is very, very important to talk about it. There was a new official firmware update, 11.8 for the 3DS. Now, what makes this official firmware important is because it involves part of the Switch, honestly. So with the Switch, they implemented a lot of privacy measures. Essentially, if you have something installed on the Switch that you shouldn't have, they will background check it against things you actually bought, and if you didn't buy it, they'll ban you. And that's essentially what they're taking now on the newest firmware of the 3S. They implement, they implement that whole coding thing and whatnot, and now that is how it is. So for the people who do have a 3DS, be careful out there. Things like Free Shop, they will be able to detect what you download now and then ban you and all that other stuff. Now, at the very beginning, there was some issues with Luma 3DS working on the newest update, but that has been since fixed. So make sure if you do want to update to 11.8, do get the newest Luma 3DS update. With the Nintendo stuff out the way, let's go ahead and jump over to the PlayStation Vita, the only console we have to talk about on the Sony side. We've got a lot of plugins to talk about, such as the Mini Vita TV. I don't know why, but that is kind of hard for me to say. Anyway, this plugin lets you connect up to four PS3 or four PS4 controllers up to your PlayStation TV or PlayStation Vita and lets you do local play on whatever games actually have local play on them. This is just awesome news because this also works in Adrenaline for PSP games and PlayStation 1 games. So say if you have Tony Hawk 1 or Tony Hawk 2, yeah, you can play local player. If you have other games that are for PS Vita that I don't know what local play games are for it, you can play it. This is a very, very cool thing that the Flow has been working on. And if you do want to actually finally be able to play local play on it, get this plugin. Do make sure you get the newest version of a journal as well, though, because that is the only version that actually supports the mini TV plugin. So, yeah, make sure you get that. 
And like I said, the last plugin was created by the Flow, and the next four plugins was also created by the Flow. These next four plugins, though, are more of tweaks to the actual PlayStation Vita instead of, you know, very fun things like PS3 and PS4 support. The plugins I'm going to talk about are self-explanatory by the names, but I'm still going to give an explanation, such as the No Lock Screen. The No Lock Screen plugin literally removes the lock screen, so whether you put it into sleep mode or you completely turn it off and turn it back on, you will not have to do the whole stupid slidey thingy to unlock the screen. Next, we have the Download Enabler, which lets you download pretty much anything from the PS Vita's web browser. So, if you want to download a plugin straight from the GitHub pages, you can. There's also a way to remove that stupid little nagging trophy th message thing whenever you get a trophy and things like that, which is very, very handy for the people like me who got annoyed by it. And the most fun thing of all, we have a custom epilepsy warning message. That message that comes up at the very beginning of the PS Vita that says, do not use if you have epilepsy problems or whatever, you can actually change that text. Once you install the plugin, all you have to do is just change one text file on your computer. Unfortunately, you can't change it on the actual PS Vita itself or can't edit it, whatever. But if you edit it on your computer and then transfer it back over to your PlayStation Vita, that custom message will show up. I have mine up a little heart right now. And like I said earlier, all these plugins have been created by the flow. He has been a workhorse as far as getting things done on the PlayStation Vita. And it is amazing and I thank him for it. And for those of you who have been waiting for the Let Me Die application to actually get released, well guys, it is finally released. For the people who have 3.60 firmware, you can dump 3.68, 3.67, 3.65 games and be able to play it onto your 3.60 firmware. The actual official name is going to be Let Me Die with a hashtag and all that, which is pretty cool. I really like it, so I'm glad it actually stuck. And lastly on the PlayStation Vita, guys, we have something very cool that actually has been in the works for almost a year now, I wanna say. So I can't remember the developer because I didn't actually put it in the notes, sadly. But this plugin lets you stream your PS Vita screen over onto your PC which is really cool. So you can literally use your PC as an external monitor instead of, you know, just playing on the Vita itself. Cause then you could also connect a DS4 controller or a PS3 controller to it and play games that way. It's just like a PlayStation TV, except not. Okay, it's pretty much a PlayStation TV. But in the last two or three weeks or so, we've had four updates to this plugin, to the PS3. Vita streamer plugin thing. The four updates are version 3, version 4, version 5, and version 6. So all these plugins actually add compatibility to many, many, many games. There is a lot less lag issues. There's a lot better frame rates. It uses a lot less CPU on the Vita itself and also on your computer itself and is very, very cool. I love this plugin. So far though, it only works for Windows. As far as for those who have a Mac, it does actually try and detect that you're trying to stream the PS Vita over to your computer if you use OBS or something else, but it doesn't actually capture the image of it. So I'm hoping in the future that will be able to be fixed. I would love to use this with my Mac so much because then I can actually record gameplay videos and show it in this video. And with that guys, that is all I have as far as homebrew news goes. I do thank you for, you know, all the noise in the background and whatnot. So just, I'm sorry about that, but I do thank you for bearing with it to the very end of this video. If you do want to check back with anything I talked about, you can find all the links in the descriptions as always. And you can also follow me on all my social media accounts because I do tend to post here and there on stuff like quick updates that way, you know, such as if there's a new 3DS update, I will talk about it on my Facebook page because I don't want people to update without knowing anything about it. Anyway guys, with that, I do thank you. Make sure you do hit that like, like and subscribe button as well as that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I also do have all my social media accounts that you can follow as well. So guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video.